Yeah, a lot of a lot of connections in that one that I didn't know until I just watched it with you guys. I hadn't seen this one yet. So good. Uh, so we are in our 10 Lies About God Bible study. Uh, we are on lesson nine. Uh, and the lie that we'll be talking about is that idea, I don't need the Bible or worship to have a relationship with God. Uh, so we will start with prayer. Uh, any particular prayer requests that we may have for our opening prayer? Huh? Part of our prayer will be a couple verses of a hymn, Thy Strong Word. So let's pray. Lord God, thank you for giving us your word, for giving us the, the community of faith and, and fellow believers to encourage one another and be encouraged as we um, walk through this, this life uh, as your children. Uh, bless us through this study. Send your Holy Spirit that we gain an understanding and appreciation for your truth and can overcome the lie that Satan tries to put into our hearts and into the hearts of those uh, with whom we're, we're talking uh, that we don't need you or one another. Uh, strengthen us through your word. Strengthen us through our, our fellowship of faith. Thy strong word did cleave the darkness. At thy speaking it was done. For created light we thank thee while thine ordered seasons run. Thy strong word bespeaks us righteous, bright with thine own holiness. Glorious now we press toward glory, and our lives our hopes confess. God the Father, light creator, to thee loud and honor be. To thee light from light begotten, praise be sung eternally. Holy Spirit, light revealer, glory, glory be to thee. Mortals, angels, now and ever, praise the Holy Trinity. Amen. All right, so um, you see the, the uh, focus statement on the front there. You know, you hear people talk about having a personal relationship with Jesus. However, though individuals have personal faith, the Bible speaks of our life with Jesus as communal. Christianity is about the church's relationship with Christ. Think about all of the different one another passages in scripture. Um, we're baptized into the body of Christ. So when we, when we address having a relationship with God, we also need to have address the relationship that we have with God's people. Um, so that's what this lesson will be focusing on uh, and, and countering that lie. I don't need um, Bible or worship to have a relationship with God. There we go. Now my slides are clicking. So the introductory activity. Uh, let's do you four as one group. And Greg, you want to join the, the back four there? Um, will be a one-sided room for now. And, and by the time the activity is done, this side will all be full by all the people that are, are coming to, to uh, we can pray. Um, yeah. So your activity in another world, imagine you live in a world exactly like our own, but with one exception, the Bible doesn't exist. Armed only with the natural knowledge of God. So not anything that the Bible that you wouldn't know unless the Bible tells you. Armed only with your natural knowledge of God, discuss what you could know about the following questions in such a world. So how does God view me? How do I know, what do I know about God? How do I get closer to God? What does God want me to do with my life? How do I get to heaven? So in your group of four, uh, you guys tackle that those questions and you have seven minutes to answer those four questions and then I'll, I'll ask you to, to share. So maybe make sure, introduce yourselves to one another if you don't know everybody in your group. I 
Ready to share what, what you came up with? Uh, back group, how does God view me? What did you discuss? Uh, one of the things we talked about was dependent upon who we would the name how God viewed us depended upon what happened to us. Okay. So a bad thing in our happenings to us, and he didn't like us. Okay. And then a good thing were happening, he did like us. Okay. I see a lot of nodding heads. Anything you guys added? Okay. Didn't know so we must be bad. Yeah. Okay. I'm bad. I'm only bad. Then there's nothing I can do to fix it. So the conscience is really tearing at us. Okay. Okay. Or flip side, I suppose you could say, well, at least I'm not like that person. Because like when we compare ourselves with others, we usually find someone worse to compare ourselves to, right? Um, or at least I'm not like that person. So, you know, so either way, it would be a lot of uncertainty, right? Um, either, boy, conscience is beating me up, I, or depends on the situation, whether God cares about me or not, or, or well, at least I'm not that person, so God must be happy with me. Um, what do we know about God? So that's, that's you know, about me. What about God? Brian, group, you want to start us on this one? I mean, we, we talk about how he, he's happy now that he's all around you. This is like, oh, where did my food come from? Where did my land come from? Where did I come from? It must be something, some higher power. Okay. Or there just isn't a God and no idea what I'm doing. Okay. So it's a, but it could be anything. It could be, it was just the one I could wear, it could be anything. Or I could be a tree, God could be a cloud, God could be in the sky, thunder, sunshine, you know, volcano. Like that. Seeing the creation as the creator instead of that. That anything? What do you We would thought maybe you would think there. What we began to think about was like Native Americans who didn't have the Bible and know okay. anything about God. And so they would probably think there would be multiple gods, the sun god, the rain right. god. <laughs> And then, um, yeah, that was what we got. Okay. I know I'm late into the game, but if I could just add something, what the word of God, I mean, just like traditions are passed from generation to generation, maybe the word of God, just people talking about God. Yeah, so I mean, that's, we're living in a world where God gave his words, the very first humans, and so everybody has at least some generational contact with them. This hypothetical exercise is, what if that weren't the case? What would we figure out just from what we do have? So we'll get to, we'll get to that point uh, when we turn the page. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so on, on this, yeah, a lot of unknowns, right? You know, there, there's something powerful wise there's something just right when we talk about conscience in the first one uh you know there, there's got to be justice out there um so how about uh, the third one how do i get closer to god this something whatever it is um okay <laughs> Okay. Uh, I got to give up something because obviously this God is powerful. And so uh, if I give something, but yeah, then the question, what does God want? What did you guys talk about in front? We, we had, yeah, we could say yes. Uh, we just said, we kept saying work, 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 try to make it happen. Yeah. We don't know what it is that we need. Yeah. We have to try. So we're just going to work. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah, we've got that simple nature in us that's going to take us the wrong direction. Well, yeah. I just use that as an example in my new view that I did. I wasn't brought up in a Christian home. Okay. And so I kind of the kind of new age, I guess, when I was trying to figure out who I was. But I remember becoming a strict vegan. Okay. And I mean, that was my God. I mean, okay. I just couldn't do that. And I ended up getting very sick. Okay. Because you had to have, be a clean vessel to get in touch with God. It was crazy. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah, we come up with a lot of different things and they all involve yeah, what am I doing? Am I obedient enough? Can I keep this strict diet? Can I, yeah. Good. How about what does God want me to do with my life? Without knowing his word, what would we come up with? So I guess it's front group time to go first. We have no idea what we do with our lives, what he wants us to do. We just have to work it at whatever hopefully will make him happy. Okay. A lot of uncertainty. Okay. That's not good. That group, anything to add? Well, I think you could just look around common sense would tell you I need to be that television or I need to, I need to do these things. Yeah, common, common sense tells you I should serve, I should help, right? I should be good, uh, you know, some, but but yeah. Although, you know, you look at nature and, and things work together, but then some things in nature, you know, the the animals that eat their young or the, you know, you say, oh. so I don't know, you know, what, what is that going to tell me? Um, how do I get to heaven? Not knowing God's word, you don't know heaven, but uh, you look across world religions and philosophies, and and there is a sense of the afterlife, right? So, so if we thought, okay, how do I get better next time, or um, what'd you come up with? I would again that leaves you in a very okay. bad situation because you would tell you what you. Like in the Old Testament, when they could sacrifice babies, yeah, and yeah, all kinds of things, yeah, Molech, and you know, some of these false gods that, uh, yeah, I gotta do something, I gotta try hard, I gotta, yeah, be drastic, but ultimately, that unknown candy, it kind of reminds me of the power of the right yeah. We do what we can. Who cares what God says, right? Which, which is a good segue into the the back side of the page, right? Uh, God's word and God's people. You know, number one, the natural knowledge of God is not enough to give a person a relationship with God. As you read the following passages, identify what we learn from the natural knowledge of God. So, who is willing to read? I'll get everybody up here, and we'll just go one after the other. So, Greg, Sandy. Greg. Nancy. Nancy. Patty. Patty. All right, Patty's good. We can, we can cycle through. All right, Greg, the first one there, Psalm 19 1. The heavens declare the glory of God, the sky is the work of his hands. Okay. Identify what we learn from the natural knowledge of God. So here God's word is saying, you can know this. Um, by looking at nature. What? There is a creator. Okay. There, there is something, right? Uh, there's something glorious. The heavens declare the glory of God. The sky is proclaimed. Romans 120. Yeah. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his external power and divine nature have been clearly seen. Being understood from what has been made, so that patient are without excuse. What do we learn from the natural knowledge of God in this passage? We're just seeing what's around you. Okay. Divine nature. Okay. Yeah, divine, something other than human, right? Something bigger than me and his power, right? It, it's something powerful made all of this. And I love how it says that, you know, so that we're without excuse. We can't say, oh, I didn't know. No, you've been living in this world. You can tell, right? You walked into this building, uh, you you understood that someone built it, right? You've been living in this world. There's There's a testimony there. Um, Matthew 5 45. Greta. He causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. I heard this being brought up in the front group in that exercise before. Uh, what does this teach us? 
Or what does what does nature teach us about God that this passage highlights? The fact that food grows, that the rain comes and the sun comes, what does that tell us? Whoever's in control is in control and good, good right? Uh, blessings, good stuff. We have food to eat. Um, Romans 2, 14 and 15, Nancy. Indeed, when Gentiles who do not have the law do by nature things required by the law, they are a law for themselves, even though they do not have the law. They show that the requirements of the law are written on their hearts, their consciences also being witness, and their thoughts sometimes accusing them, and at other times even defending them. You want me to explain that passage first, or should we go right to the, you tell me what it says. Better keep us from going in the ditch. Okay. So, so Paul, um, he's using this obvious truth to make a different point. Um, but, but as he's making the point, he says, okay, look, look at the Gentiles. So for the Jewish people, there were two kinds of people in the world. There were Jews and everyone else, that everyone else was Gentiles. So the Jews had the Old Testament, they had the prophets, they had the priests, they had the, um, the, the Ten Commandments, they had the temple, they had all of that to tell them what God's uh, law was. But he says the Gentiles who don't have any of that, they do by nature the things required by the law, making them a law for themselves. So in other words, they're demonstrating something. So, so you think about all the different law codes in the history of the world. Hammurabi, Strabo, and you can name 20 other ones. You compare them, and there are some similarities, right? Don't murder, don't rape, don't steal. But, you know, we know what's right and what's wrong. He says that's showing something, that they do the things that the law says, even though they don't have the law, says what? That the law is written on their hearts. Um, and their consciences testify to that, right? When you do something wrong, condemning, when you do the right thing, defending you, um, so, so what does this passage say we know about God, even without his word? That he, he, he speaks to us. Mm -hmm. not... Right. Yeah, he does. Excellent. And what does he tell us through our conscience? That we're sinners and we need a savior. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're accountable. We need some help, right? Um, our, our heart says, this is wrong, and, and we know we've done it, and our conscience says, hey, you did that. Um, yeah. Quick question. Yes. Well, that's a good thing. But, but I was thinking about Psalm King Paul. Yep. Now later on in the Bible, it says, I show mercy on you because what you did was in ignorance. So Saul, what he did, he really thought he was doing the right thing. So was his conscience really yeah, yeah. So, you know, and, and yeah, Paul talking about how how uh, um, those people act in ignorance and unbelief that that uh, uh, God had mercy on and, and, and brought to the light, um, as opposed to those who were saying, no, uh, we're fighting against this, even though we know God says this. So so he, he makes that distinction. But but the uh, uh, the question about the conscience we, God made us perfect, right? Sin corrupted that. God gave us the gift of a conscience to point to the law written on our hearts, faded, right? Because, because we have sin. And, and so our, the sin in our hearts tries to say, oh, no, no, this is okay. You're calling, calling wrong, right? And all of that, like Paul talks about in Romans 1. Um, God made it, gave us a perfect gift. Our sin Harnesses that perfect gift. So we can harden our consciences. Um, in, in Romans 1, it talks about that, how, how you know people said, um, I'm going to do this, and I'm ignoring what God says, and eventually, he says, he just gives them over to it. Um, because, well, I mean, just from experience, you, you probably can remember a time when something, um, the first time you did it, really bothered you. 
Oh, I know that was wrong. I shouldn't have done that. The 43rd time you did it, you hardly even thought about it. Um, but that's, and, and we pray for God to guide us in his word to reinforce that conscience in us, but uh, we can harden it. We can, um, yeah, uh, get to where it doesn't bother us like it used to or like it should. And then you get whole societies of people doing that. And you're raised thinking this is the right thing instead of that. And it just, it continues in that, that snowball. Yeah. Was that not the Because he was a real Yeah. When he was persecuting Christians. But think about what he says, I was a murderer. I was a, 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 a persecutor and a violent man, uh, but I was shown mercy. Uh, so that in me, the chief of sinners, it might be demonstrated just how amazing God's grace is. Um, so, yeah, he was zealous about it, but he was mistaken. Doesn't make it right. And, and never does he say, oh, at least I was trying my best. Um, he says, this is all my shame. Uh, so, and, and God's grace, because, you know, this spotlight this highlighted thing all the more um so anything else on that one how about act seventeen twenty seven? i think that's patty god did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him though he is not far away from any of us what do we learn from the natural knowledge um uh, that is following after uh, uh paul talked about how uh, the um, he arranged all things uh, so that people would come face to face with this reality that there's something out there, you know. So God put the natural knowledge in us um, to realize that hey, there's something there, uh, and then He says He did this so that we would seek Him and, and reach out and find Him. He's not far. Okay. I mean, his answers are right here, right? Right. He's given us his word. He's, uh, he's there. Um, yeah, the natural knowledge is there so that we're asking questions. So that we're saying, hey, there's got to be something out here. I got to figure out what this is. I got to figure out what I have to do. I got to figure, you know, all of these natural questions. God put the natural knowledge in us so that we would ask them so that he could give us the answer. Right. And that, that's where the the word comes in. So before we get to, to that next point, number two, agree or disagree, all people know that God exists. That's how they show Okay. Okay, why? Because there are angels, and then that's the idea of the know versus there's a lot of people who believe there's something bigger than themselves. Okay. Who else want to weigh in? Is the old saying, there are no atheists in foxholes true? Have you heard that saying? So when someone's, you know, in, in the foxhole, so you're in the middle of, of war and the, the battle is fierce uh, and you see, you know, bullets are flying over your head and the enemy is charging. Um, there's the old saying, there are no atheists in foxholes. So at that point, all of a sudden you're saying, okay, help me, whatever you are, whatever this is, uh, there's something bigger than me. Uh, you know, as, as life is coming to a close, all of a sudden people start having some, um, some questions, concerns. What do you think? Is that true? Well, I don't think Stephen Hawkins did. Okay. Yeah. Why? Why? Yeah. I don't know. He just was so I think it was intellectualized for him. Okay. It sounds like you came from something that's loud. Yep. Yeah, I don't know what you're thinking there a whole lot. Okay. We don't know what he's like when he exists. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, all people know God exists at some point, maybe. You know, before you become intellectualized, before you have that. Soul-breaking disease that caused you to nihilism and all the yeah. You know, there's there's things in life that that steer you in directions. And, 
I'm just thinking of, I'm just thinking of that, that thing in Romans 1, right? as you guys were talking, I'm like, uh, um, so oh, oh, man. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, where is this section? Um, so, so right after that passage, for since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that men are without excuse. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became full of futile, and their few foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal man and birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore, God gave them over in the sense of desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served created things rather than the creator who is forever praised. Amen. Um, they exchanged the truth of God for a lie. So he says, they, they, although they knew God, they said, I'm not going to worship you. And they started lying to themselves and continually lying to themselves over and over. You know, you lie to yourself enough, it becomes sure. Um, and, you know, so kind of that, so you could argue from that side, well, even the most hardened atheist, um, that's because they convinced themselves of that against every bit of evidence that God had placed there. Um, so this is a tough one to answer. If we just all people know God exists. I mean, somehow Say that again. Somehow. Door every person's heart, and they either fit further with that no human will be checked. Yeah. So the the natural knowledge of God is out there. The evidence is there, and. Um, when people continue to reject it, he lets them continue to reject it. Uh, now, it may be that someone from very early on is brought up and taught that there is no God, these are all the explanations. Uh, and so then you get to that, that warning against the generational curses, you know, that uh, the, the sins of the fathers to the third and fourth generation, that, that if, if we are, you know, we're training our kids, uh, let's we got to frame him in God's way and not not other ways. You know, so so might there be an individual who who never knew God existed? Maybe, um, uh, but I mean, even so, you get the stats. What in 2014, three percent of the people in our country were atheists. That's that's a small number, um, and every atheist I've ever talked to. When they describe it, I would describe them more as an agnostic than an atheist. So agnostic is someone who says, I don't know. Every atheist I've had, a, everyone who's told me that they're an atheist, um, you ask a few questions and it comes out, well, that's, that's what I call myself. But I mean, who can really, no one can really know. Um, and so kind of backing off of that, no, nope, it's a proven fact there is no God. Uh, I'm sure like Stephen Hawking's, I think, is actually an atheist. Uh, or was was actually an atheist based on on what he said and what he wrote, um, but uh, yeah, in 2019 there was a poll that came out that was 4.1 percent. Point is, it's a small number. I mean, the psalmist uh, is is right. The fool says in his heart there is no God. Um, for someone to say there is no God, they're fooling themselves, and maybe it's because that's what they were taught to do. Maybe it's because they lied themselves enough, but. Um, yeah, the the truth is there. There are people who say, "I don't, I don't want that truth. That truth doesn't work for me." Questions, comments on that one? <clears throat> Look at that long question number three. To have a relationship with God, a person needs the Bible. God said, "So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith." Galatians three. God brings us into that relationship through faith. God works faith through the Bible. God says faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. In fact, God's word is our life. Man shall not live on bread alone, but in every word that comes from the mouth of God. Matthew 4. Jesus said, if you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. We remain in Jesus when we listen to his word. Read Hebrews 1, 1 and 2. Uh, and then we'll uh, ask that question. So I guess we're back to Greg. 
In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. Okay, so that, that passage, um, God appeared to the prophets. He gave them special messages. There were various ways in which he communicated with his people. Uh, and then he sent the word, right? The word made flesh. He sent his son. And, and the writer of the Hebrews says he, he speaks to us uh, now. He's spoken to us by his son. You know, Jesus gave us the word. Um, so imagine if your spouse or boyfriend, girlfriend only talked to you once a week or month or year. What would that do to you emotionally? And how does that relate to the topic of the Bible? Don't think too hard if, you're, if your spouse oh. never talked to you. Break you down emotionally, you wouldn't be able to. Why? Uh, that's, that's an awesome point. Let's think about why. Well, I think because you just have to have an interaction with the human. Like you said, and I don't the breath of it going from crazy. Okay. But, you know, but it's just um, you need that interaction. I'm, I'm going to play kindergarten. Why? Wow. Uh, because I've made a sandwich. Okay, I've got to wear this that way. Oh, this is amazing. Why? Wow. Wow. Because he loves it. So, so let's redirect now because we got to the answer. But uh, so you said it, 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 it breaks you down because we need that interaction. Um, well, it's proof. If they speak to you, you know, if it's not, I love you, if it's kids, if it's a that was good, you're important to me, and let me help you with that. That's proof of your relationship. Okay. You know that they, they see you, they know you, they love you, and, and you reciprocate and you have a relationship. That's how it's demonstrated. And why do you need proof? Because I'm I gave her a ring 24 years ago. <laughs> Life is hard. It's okay. Hard. Go, go with that. Life is hard. Why do I need proof? I doubt. Why do I doubt? Okay. Yeah. Then you got the, the world we're in and Satan doing everything we can to make us doubt, right? Because the relationship is good. It's supposed to build up in our relationship with God with one another and all that. And so Satan's going to do everything. There are a lot of things that happen in every day that Satan's saying, oh, look at that. That's proof for something else. That's proof she doesn't really love me. Um, and so, yeah, we need, uh, because of all the things you said, right? That's how we're wired. That's how God made us. Um, we, we need that relationship. We need that encouragement. We need to, to hear it again and again. So how does this then apply to the word? That God feels the same way. He wants us to interact with him. Okay. He tells us to pray, right? He wants to hear from us. Coming in with our needs. Yep. And worship. And worship. Yep. How about the other side of it? How about us? What do we need? Forgiveness. Okay. Regular assurance of that. Okay. We have forgiveness. We need the assurance of that forgiveness. We need to hear his voice, right? We need to hear God telling us that he speaks through his word, right? He gave us his son to give us the word. And so, you know, how many times have you read through the Bible? You know, dozens maybe. Uh, and yet every time it's powerful. And, and, and maybe you pick up something that you didn't notice last time through as God is saying, hey, look at this reminder right here. Hey, how about this? And you get more guidance. You get more guidance. Right. Any questions about the Lutheran truth? Do you guys ever talk about the Holy Spirit? Yeah, okay. absolutely. <laughs> yeah. In church, I believe in God the Father, I believe in God the Son, I believe in God the Holy Spirit. But yeah, and so, so in that, so how does how does the Holy Spirit play into this topic? The Word. So, sometimes we just take it for granted, right? And and that's an important thing. We shouldn't just take it for granted that oh, everybody knows this. Uh, it's important to state it. What were you saying, Greg? They want to your heart. Okay. The tool, one of the tools that the Holy Spirit uses is the word, right? Faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word about Christ. 
Um, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for salvation of everyone who believes. Um, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. And how does he get us to say Jesus is Lord? He uses the word to show us that Jesus is Lord again and again and again and again and again. All those reminders because what's Satan doing? Satan is saying, oh, no, he doesn't love you. I mean, all the way back to the first temptation, right? That was the temptation, right? You should eat that fruit. God's holding out on you. If you eat it, then you'll know the things God doesn't want you to know. If he's holding out on you. He, you know, he, he's making these rules for you because he doesn't love you. Um, that's Satan's temptation that he keeps coming with again and again and again. So, so yeah, we need the Holy Spirit working in our hearts. Um, the, the, the Holy Spirit present with us when we gather to worship, uh, working through the word of God, uh, creating faith in our hearts and creating this bond of faith. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints. Why are those things all together in the creed? Um, it's the Spirit that works all of these things, right? In the Nicene Creed, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, the one who, who creates faith. And then you go into that discussion about the church. Why? Um, because it's the Holy Spirit doing his work that that builds the, the church with its foundation as Christ, you know, and the cornerstone as Christ and the capstone as Christ. Um, but the, the Spirit using the word, that that's a great point. And, and probably, you know, um, we tend to focus on the things that are really easy to describe and are visible, right? Jesus, look at that. He became man so that we could see him and understand him. The spirit, what? You've got a sound of a wind and you've got, you know, and, and we don't see it, but we, uh, like Jesus says, uh, like the wind, you, you don't see it, but you see its effects. And yeah, the, the spirit works. So thank you for bringing that up. That's a great, uh, important thing to talk about. All right, Psalm 1, 1 to 3. What time do we have? Five after? Um, yeah, you can do this yet. Yeah. Uh, whose turn is it? I, my favorite is off the list. Candy, that's right. Yeah, I think so. So this one we got to look at. Um, yeah. Page 771. Are we singing Psalm 1 today? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. I'll share, you should share a little hot luck. We had to memorize it. I'm going to memorize it for a few days, but you're still like. Okay. The way of the righteous and the wicked. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the feet of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its seed does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. Okay, thank you. So uh, that word meditates, on his law he meditates day and night. What do you understand by that word? To study. To study. Yeah, the, the Hebrew root word has the picture of, of growling, um, of, of murmuring. of So it, it's, it's used uh, of a lion growling over its prey. Uh, it, it's used of the, the person studying the word and, and, and repeating it and, 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 and uh, hearing it again and again and again. Um, it, you're chewing on it. Like it, it's, it's, you know, he talks about it being your delight. In the law of the Lord, he's meditating on it. You're studying it. You're you're cherishing it, making it your own. Um, in metaphorical terms, the scripture describes the benefits of daily reading the Bible. Explain the metaphors. So he is like a tree planted by streams of water. Unpack that. <laughs> We have the nutrients we need. The tree needs that water. We need the word. Okay. Mm -hmm. Gives us the nutrients for the the strength of faith, just like I need the vitamins and whatever else is in my food to, to strengthen my body. 
My faith needs those nurturing as well. It yields its fruit in a season, the psalm says. Unpack that part of the picture. Well, the tree is doing the thing it was created mm -hmm. to do. Okay. The purpose of the tree is to, like the pine tree is supposed to make acorn uh, pine cones, okay. which are their fruiting bodies, and it's supposed to shower some pollen and make more. <laughs> Make more pine trees, that's and then lovely lumber. That's what it does. Okay. So fulfilling its purpose, what does that have to do with us? Gives us strength and the foundation and okay. direction. Okay. Because you know, it just does. Yeah, you had that exercise at the beginning, and again and again, you, you're saying there's so much uncertainty. What are we supposed to do? How are when you're in God's word, you know. It, it helps you to fulfill your purpose. Um, Good. How about that, that last picture? What it, um, its leaf does not wither. I think we don't think it's in that size of the And yeah. so for us, it's not that spirituality. Okay. We don't wither, right? Okay. It's not you know that. That endurance that uh, um, it doesn't say that he takes us away from struggles. Uh, nowhere in the Bible does it say that. But that endurance, you're, you're, you're fed, you're nourished, you're exercising your faith by fulfilling your purpose. You're, um, we, we endure. Um, we're blessed, happy with eschatological significance. If you haven't been to church yet, I'll explain that. Um, so it's a, a reference to a part of the sermon. Uh, were you going to say something, Matthew? Leaves also wither, like we get trees morning and they're like, cover your plants, cover your yeah. plants. So we don't have to cover our own self. Like our leaves are protected from withering. Okay. When we are doing the, doing, I love that, the growling and chewing on it, the meditating on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, and then God provides the towel over us to protect our leaves. Yeah. Like the projections, but we saw it. We, we can't protect ourselves. We think we can. We've got our on our car, and we're back. Yeah. But ultimately, there's a path that I'm trying to remember where it is. I think it's on the right column in my Bible. I don't know what book it's in. Um, about uh, 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 he's. It's a picture of heaven. He's. Is it Revelation? He spreads his tent over them. Mm -hmm. uh, they they will not fear for earth. He spreads his tent over them. You know, just that that picture of uh, he he's protecting us. Just after you said that, I, my mind jumped over there. Um, good. Anything else on that one? We probably don't want to tackle the next one with three minutes. So we will close with prayer, and we'll pick up next time at number four. Um, and, and finish out this discussion on line number nine. Uh, I don't need the Bible or worship to have a relationship with God. We kind of demonstrated in that one. Yeah, I need I need the Bible. Uh, we'll we'll uh, cover the rest of it uh, next time. So let, let's close with prayer. Lord God, thank you for giving us this time in your word. Bless us through it. Uh, nourish our faith. Empower us to fulfill the purpose that you have for us. Uh, allow us to, to bear fruit. Uh, continue to strengthen us. Give us the endurance to, to make it through all the challenges that this life brings and help us to give you glory. Uh, bless our worship coming up here in a few minutes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank <laughs> you.